chapter number one, verse number three sometime. You don't have to put it up there, but that's one of the verses I quote every day in prayer or nearly every day. Uh, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. The Lord has given us everything we need to live a life that's pleasing to him. Luke chapter number eight. 27, when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils a long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. 35, then they went out to see what was done, and came to Jesus, and found the man, out of whom the devils were departing, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Jesus is encountering a demoniac that is filled with a legion of demons. At least by his own admission, may just been one. We don't know, but the Bible says that there were many. Sometimes the devil tries to brag on how much he is. And he ain't above telling a lie. And the lifestyle of legion reflected the presence of bad spirits, of evil spirits, of demon spirits. Including nakedness. And when the demons were cast out and their influence was removed, the Bible said he was in his right mind, and that included being clothed. Another thing to think about we lived in a house many times. There were four of us boys, and then mom and daddy, six, and then Michelle lived with us quite a long time. And we lived in many houses. Sister Maria had one bathroom. Sometimes you either forget to lock the door, or they forgot to put one on the door. There is a natural instinct when somebody walks in on you in the bathroom. Maybe y'all was born in one of them houses that had a bathroom for everybody. We weren't that fortunate. Generally, we was taking a bath together when we was little fellas. Sometimes all four of us. Get a lot of whoopings. Supposed to be good in the bathtub. Get to fighting, splashing water all over the floor. And I digress, but... But somebody walks in and flings the door open and there you stand in all your glory. No, nobody I know of. They might be some. But even in our house. And we weren't the most modest creatures in the world. That's an understatement probably. But there's an automatic. Woo! Y'all know what I'm talking about? It don't matter who walks in on you. Maybe your husband or your wife, but you get surprised. It's going to be... My wife is pulling the shower curtain down, the, all the clothes off the thing, all everybody else's towels. She looks like a pile of dirty laundry by the time she gets done. Making sure that she ain't really caught. And society has, has historically acknowledged the aversion to nakedness. And I used this illustration last year, and I'm sure many of you will remember it, but I don't think there's anybody back in the nursery tonight, but let's just say little Ava is back there, and her mama goes to change her diaper, And while Sister Kessley turns around to throw one diaper away, Ava moves with the speed of the $6 million man like those kids can do. You all know what I'm talking about. Jumps up, boogies out here, and comes streaking right down the middle of the aisle. Naked as a jaybird. What's everybody going to do? Laugh. Everybody is. Except Sister Kessley. She's going to be coming running behind her. And you know you can't catch them. (laughs) And she's going to be blushing and... And everybody else is just going to be, ain't that cute. But if John Michael comes running down the middle of the aisle... Like he's about to do right now... 
and he ain't got no clothes on. Maybe not John Michael. We'll just say Brother Marcus, because that is a possibility. <laughs> you just had to know my brother. But if he comes running down the middle of the aisle naked, before he gets right here, somebody back there's done pulled out their phone. Nine one one, get the police down here. There's a naked man running around. Yeah, they ain't gonna be taking no pictures, Brother Terry. I've seen that before. Okay. He ain't got a modest bone in his body. He slept with me till he was like 17, man. Come on. But some a grown man comes down here running, we look at it totally different. Or a woman either for that matter before y'all start acting all holy. There's naked women runs around too. But society acknowledges that. That's not normal. It's normal for a, a, a little baby to come run around naked. They all love being naked. You got to teach them to put clothes on. That's right. But grown folks don't run around naked. At least today. I'm probably going to be getting run out of church here pretty soon. If I'm going to go, I better go good. Our society, I want you to think about this. Now, y'all are all laughing, but all I did was just ripen you up for the kill. Listen, it's normal for a baby from the earliest of birth to run around naked and nobody cares. But it's not normal for an adult to do it. But think for just a minute. Where is our society at in that mindset? So as a matter of fact, Brother Terry, what our society is trying to do is to... that They say we're liberated and we're free and we're advanced and we're smarter than everybody else and, and all of that stuff. But in fact, with the way that we appear, we're actually going backwards. We're not far from the ca caveman days in, in our thought process. But we talk about we're, we're going backwards. Rather than growing and becoming more, you know, we're going backwards. Society is pushing the limits in this, reverting back to a primitive state, which is uh, uh, indicative of a lack of knowledge. Because that, that's how we did. We run around naked when we didn't know any better. Did I lose everybody already? This crowd over here. <laughs> Clothing is designed... Now, to accentuate instead of conceal. And I read, a, I read a, 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 a news release one day because you know that if you watch movies and it's, you, you determine what movies you watch by what they're rated, you do know who picks that rating, don't you? It ain't the pastor. It's the movie making people. And I read an article where there were lobbyists pushing for them to be able to put more nudity in a movie and still get a good rating. There were people arguing that they needed to show more naked people in a movie and give it a PG-13 rating so more people could get in and see it. Y'all think I'm crazy. Is this starting to make sense to some of us? Is this starting to make sense? You think the devil ain't happy about all of that? Taking people further and further and further? Adam and Eve was naked and they hid from God. And now they're putting naked people on a platform out of church. Come on now, hang with me. I know exactly what I'm doing. Bible teaches 
on modesty of dress. We are to follow Christian principles in all areas of our lives. Somebody say amen. amen. With self-control and moderation, 1 Corinthians 9 and 25, Galatians 5 and 23, we have to avoid loving and conforming to the world, Romans 12 and 2, James 4 and 4, 1 John 2 and 15. And then there are some specific passages concerning dress. I might be acting so crazy because I gave blood today, and they told me not to do anything strenuous till tomorrow. Y'all don't tell them I disobeyed. I took my band-aid off about 30 minutes early. I'm just feeling all rebellious tonight. In like manner also, 1 Timothy 2 and 9, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair, that's not braided, that's broided, and I'll explain to you what that is, or gold, or pearls, or costly array. That word shamefacedness comes from the Greek word eidos, A-I-D-O-S. And is a sense of shame, bashfulness, reverence, and regard to others. It's derived from the root word eidos, E-I-D-O-S, which has the significance of turning the eyes or the mind or the attention. So shamefacedness, for a lady to be adorned with shamefacedness, would be intentionally dressing to not draw attention to yourself, especially from men. I'm not going to get into it a whole lot, but I have a whole long line of research of why that the Bible deals much more with the way women dress than it does the way men dress. The Bible does. And that is because men are visual creatures and women are emotional creatures. That's why there ain't a whole big market Though it is increasing. It is increasing. But there's not a huge market for women in the pornography. Because they really ain't interested. After about two looks, that's all she wrote. Now, this is, I, I'm paraphrasing, but this is research. But women present themselves in a way that they know they're drawing attention to themselves. Men can also. Doesn't mean that men, I'm going to touch on that. This word has significance. Shamefacedness has significance both to adornment and apparel. In regard to apparel, it is showing the responsibility of the woman to dress so that she does not turn the eyes the mind or the attention to the form of her body. And the reason for dressing decently, boy, is it just quite really, really quiet in here? Is it just my imagination? Yeah, it's really, really quiet in here. I ain't gone that far crazy yet. Why do you lock your house? Let's just let everybody know that. Brother Marcus says, we'll put it out there on the internet world. Yeah. <laughs> the reason why we lock up our valuables and the reason why we lock up our houses is two things. Just keep other folks out and protect our stuff. So by the same principle... The reason why, now, now listen, don't nobody, don't nobody want to go messing in some territory like I can dress how I want to. It ain't my fault they look at me. That dog don't hunt. You know better than that. I've been told that before. You know better than that. The reason for dressing decently is the same as locking your house. 
You want to protect what's inside and also from unwanted intrusion. Then sobriety comes from the Greek word sophrosune or sophrosune. S-O-P-H-R-O-S-U-N-E, which means soundness of mind, sound judgment, curbing one's impulses, self-controlled and temperate. It signifies an habitual inner self-government with constant reign on all passions and desires, which would hinder the temptation to these from arising. Come on, how many of you don't, never have heard the cliche or have never seen a skit or, or read it when, when some gal gets pulled over by the police? Huh? Let me tell you something. She don't tell him, hold on a minute and let me get my coat out of the trunk so I can cover myself up. What's the joke? Huh? Let me show some leg and let me show some other stuff. And I'll get his mind off of giving me a ticket. Y'all ain't never, y'all never seen that stick before. Never heard of it before. Some of you, come on, don't be looking at me crazy. Some of you done tried it before. <laughs> Bad your eyeballs. Well, officer, I did not know that that was. <laughs> A Christian woman must exercise an inner self-control in that she must re resist the allure of becoming seducing. <laughs> Amanda and I went to Jackson, Tennessee a few weeks ago right before Easter. Spent the night just going to get away. I told you all about that right when I got back from, from overseas. And, and uh, we went shopping and we were in J.C. Penney's and there was three or four ladies that standing here. And I, I get bored when Amanda's looking and looking and looking. <laughs> and so I, this is, this is not polite. And I'm not, thank goodness I'm not teaching about holiness of manners. But I was listening to them. I was listening to them talk. And they were, there ain't nothing in this whole store that's decent. Every outfit that we've looked at this whole time is all the way down to here, all the way up to here, or like this. <laughs> but, I mean, they, they weren't doing all that, but close. And so I had to interject and say, hey, me and my wife have been noticing the same thing all day. Ain't nothing looks right. I mean, from like five years old and up, all hoochie mama clothes. Because we're looking for things for little girls, little boys, and me. Which we didn't have too much trouble with me. But the lady stuff was all about being provocative. 1 Peter 3, 3-5, three through five, Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold. It's the same as the, the broided. Uh, they would weave gold and jewels throughout their hair and make it stand up real tall and make it be flashy. And it was all about prestige and status. Sometimes we push the limits a little bit, but we'll, we'll talk about that another day. And of wearing of gold or putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Your clothing reflect where you stand with the Lord. That's what the book says. The scripture teaches that lust is sinful. So this means to present yourself in a way which provokes lust is also sinful. Matthew 7 and 12, 18 and 6, 22 and 37 through 40, Romans 14 and 13, and 1 Corinthians 8 and 13. Back that up. Immodesty, dressing immodestly, dressing provocatively, dressing to draw attention to yourself can appeal to vanity and pride in the one with the clothes on and the one looking at them. Dressing immodestly can in fact result in violating all three categories of sin, which are lust of the flesh, 
lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Listen here, dressing immodestly can redefine the basis for attraction and the foundation for relationships. Yeah, I hesitate to say this because y'all going to make something bad out of it. All of y'all need to repent, most of you. Everybody but me and Brother Jerry. And Brother McKinney. Oh my goodness, brother. I'm just teasing. But I ain't blind. Y'all can tell that how beautiful my wife is. Okay? I ain't blind. And I got a little bit of Brother Mahaney in me. Y'all remember Brother Norman telling about that? That good looking woman coming by and Brother Mahaney looking up at her and saying, Good job, God. <laughs> I felt that spirit on me a time or two, Brother David. I'm not blind. Now, I have gotten smarter when we're out somewhere, Sister Marie, and I see a pretty woman. I say, Hey, baby, that, that gal's kind of cute there. Then I'm safe. Okay? But there was a. I mean, I mean. I've always thought the Lord did his best work while Adam was asleep. Always. And I was, I don't even remember where I was. I just remember the feeling. When this gorgeous, beautiful gal that hadn't heard this message I'm preaching tonight. She was close to my height, and here she come. And my first thought, Brother David, was, man, that's a good-looking gal. And then my second thought was, and she's probably a terrible mama. And I was so excited. I was so excited. Listen to me. I was so happy because the old me... That ain't in my mind nowhere. That is, turn this ride around. Okay? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, Y'all ladies do the same thing. You walk past a guy in the mall and he smells good and looks good. You're going to find your way into wherever he's shopping at. Come on now. I might have been morning night, but it wasn't last night. Y'all sitting all there looking all holy and stuff because I just happened to be a feller. But I was so happy, Brother Terry, because my parameters for attraction had changed. And it wasn't no longer just this. But I start, that gal, I don't even know her name. I, you know what? I might have been asleep. It might have been something in a dream. I don't even know. It don't even matter to me no more. Because I start comparing her in my mind to my wife. She can't hold a candle to her in any way. Can I get some amens up in the house? Now, I told you I, I tend to make myself vulnerable. But when the, you get full of the Spirit of God, your levels of criteria change. What's important is not important anymore. And you start thinking things and running things through a godly filter. And when you stop praying and you stop reading your Bible and you stop being faithful to the house of God, you will find yourself going back to your old way. And that needs to be a stop sign thrown up. That needs to be a siren going off in your mind. And you got to say, I got to get somewhere and get on my face. Because I don't like that me as much as I like this me. Right. Huh? I know I, I'm acting about half nuts tonight, but it ain't on purpose. I mean, it is on purpose. Because if I keep y'all laughing, y'all won't ever get mad. Because as you draw closer to God, and, and the Holy Ghost starts clamping down on you a little bit, there is a fleshly uh, uh, reaction that will rise up. And it's not always, change me, Lord Jesus. But a lot of times, it's how can I figure out to not do that and stay where I want to be with the Lord. And I'm telling you, you can't. All the reason the divorce rate is so high 
around the main nature of the movie. Because a lot of the relationships are based on attraction of the deal of the blood. Which is incredibly shallow. Incredibly shallow. And it redefines the basis for attraction. And you fall in love with the shell, you're going to be bad disappointed. Or the pickup truck, gals, or the house, or any other number of things that determine whether we're attracted or not. We get this stuff in the Bible, and, and I know, I, I, I'm sorry Garrison, but I might have rushed through that just a little bit. But you get the inside fixed, which will show up on the outside, and put the kingdom of God first, He'll lead you where you're supposed to be. And it affects all areas of your life. I'm about done with, with just tonight. The hidden man of the heart refers to a reflection of the heart and the attentions. And it says it's in the sight of God of great price. Which means before you go out, and I use that term loosely, before you leave your house or before you leave your bedroom or your closet or your bathroom or wherever you're getting dressed at, the Lord has already determined. He doesn't wait and see, mm, God, He does not wait and see how people react to determine whether you're dressed right or not. Dressing modestly respects the human being as one that's created in the image of God and deserving of respect. Dressing immodestly removes one's dignity and makes them a public spectacle. We can act like we're all refined and all the prude in us has all disappeared and everything, but you know as well as I do when you go to work somewhere and some old gal or, or whatever that works with you comes to work looking like you know what, when her back is turned, every woman in that place says what she's dressed like. I've heard it. Some practical guidelines for modesty. We acknowledge that God's desire for us to dress modestly. That it is God's desire for us to dress modestly. And if we disagree personally, if we think it's all right to show all our stuff off everywhere we go, then at least obey based upon the principle that is pleasing to God. Because if there's modest, then there is immodest. Recognize that the world does not set the standard. And also recognize this. I read some things today that we need to be very, very, very careful how we respond and react to people that don't believe like we do. Because most of them aren't doing it to thumb their nose at us. They're doing it because they don't know any better. Most people do not intend to dress provocatively. Most people do not intend to dress provocatively, but they're simply going along with the latest fashions of the world. Instead of searching for something to wear under it or wear over it in J.C. Penney's, they just buy it because it's what's there. Our desire should be to please God. And what brings glory to God? My obedience. What is pleasing to God? Let's check ourselves out in the mirror before we leave. What's pleasing to God? Am I feel like I'm pleasing to God? I promise you if Adam and Eve knew they weren't pleasing to God, a Holy Ghost filled person knows when they're pleasing to God or not. Do some specific considerations here. God, according to Isaiah 47 and 2, God considers the uncovering of the thigh to be immodest and it defines everything, the, everything from the kneecap up as the thigh. Clothes should cover one's body in a way so that it is not exposed in a way that is sexually appealing. Clothes should not accentuate or cup the curves of one's body. Clothes shouldn't be so tight nor loose that your underclothes can be seen. Clothing should not look like it stretched across your body. That stretchy fabric, t-shirts, skinny britches, them shorty short things, sleeveless tops, and swimming suits in mixed company. And when you're just among women or you're just among men, you still need to dress decent.